Hi, I'm Trish Lapidus. This is my book, my memoir of living in community, called Sweet Potato Suppers, A Yankee Woman Finds Salvation in a Hippie Village. And I'm going to read just a short bit from the foreword to the book. In the late 1970s, I was declared a terrorist by the government of the United States. I was considered dangerous not in myself, but in my collectivity with some 1,200 other folks, many of them children. Our family lived for almost 10 years in the related communities known as The Farm, founded by Stephen Gaskin and his followers. When, in 1984, Don and I moved into town, rented an apartment, bought a car, and took jobs for wages, we were apparently no longer a threat. How a teeny village frightened the most powerful nation on earth is one part of my story. Sweet Potato Suppers, A Yankee Woman Finds Salvation in a Hippie Village, is the story of a personal awakening from a generations-long sleep. The sleep seems to have happened like this. During centuries of trouble, war and plunder, European feudal law, famine, plague, the persecution of healers and dissidents, cruelty or its underside of fear became a common invisible part of the character of every woman and man. Each person experienced heart-injuring events they reenacted blindly in daily relationships. Thus, while they made heroic efforts to benefit their children, they also frightened and scarred them. That is part of what I learned on the farm, what history has done to children and to childhood, and how history in its crueler aspects has come right into the family and caused cruel parenting techniques. If you look into your own childhood, you may find incidents of things that happened to you that should not have happened to you. And this is part of the story, how to heal from the things that should not have happened to us. And another part is how not to pass this on to our children. This writing began as an apology to my children for the trouble they inherited. I wanted them to know their history, especially the deep old roots of family pain, and what the farm, embedded in their early memories, had to do with it all. What began as an internal family message grew into this book, the story of how one family, while living in community, began reclaiming its soul. One thing I've learned about communities, about people who decide to live together and work together, and be honest with one another about their moments of maybe not the best uh, behavior they uh, could have come up with, uh, is that it does knock the, the corners off. It does help you uh, become a better person. Um, people, I, I've watched people use community as a way to grow in, in their own strength and in their own um, graciousness in relationship with other people.